America. Don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping. Okay, hello and welcome to school. Uh, this is for Thursday, September 24th. We're talking about the Bill of Rights. Uh, so kind of quickly going to go through the uh, 10 amendments uh, in the Bill of Rights. And we got to kind of wrap up this unit uh, since we are on a shortened time constraint uh, with this semester. So uh, these Bill of Rights will be on the quiz tomorrow. So just be ready for that. Uh, but we're going to kind of jump into it real quick. Uh, these first 10 amendments, just to keep in mind, uh, these are passed after the Constitution is ratified. Uh, but the promise of adding a Bill of Rights was really crucial for the ratification of the Constitution. Uh, without these Bill of Rights, there wasn't a ton of uh, individual liberties protected in the Constitution itself. Uh, so these amendments speak more to the individual citizen and how their rights are protected. So the First Amendment, five major freedoms listed here, uh, freedom of religion. Uh, Congress isn't gonna be able to establish an official religion. Uh, or prohibit the free exercise thereof. Can't uh, limit the freedom of speech. Uh, there's gonna be exceptions to that, uh, but freedom of speech, freedom of the press, right of the people to assemble, and the right of the people to petition the government for grievances. So uh, we have the freedom to petition the government. You can do that. Uh, there's lots of petitions like on change.org that get signed. Some of them are kind of ridiculous, but uh, that's our right, we're allowed to do that. Uh, so giving it a time of example of when free speech does not apply. So you could say here, like, you can't make threats at school. You can't make threats at an airport. Can't yell fire in a theater, anything like that. So freedom of speech does not apply when what you are saying can upset uh, the peace of other people or when there's a threat to uh, the life or property uh, or well-being of another person. So that's where freedom of speech does not apply. And that's why you see, like, when people post stuff on social media making threats, it's taken very seriously. Uh, and even like the FBI has been involved here in Grants Pass before because of threats that are made. Uh, so freedom of speech does not apply in every situation. Uh, there are limits to that. Uh, the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. You can see this guy with bare arms. <laughs> so uh, this is obviously a controversial amendment uh, that's debated a lot today. Um, the it wasn't really controversial. Like the 1930s is actually the first time that we have a case about uh, the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, but uh, obviously, if you look at it today, uh, people looking at the debate between banning like, uh, you know, AR-15s and stuff like that. Um, one side says the right to keep and bear arms. It's right there in Amendment 2. The other side says, uh, well, AR-15s didn't exist in 1787, so uh, maybe we should look at limiting certain kinds of weapons, uh, but that's the debate that kind of continues today uh, around the Second Amendment. Uh, restrictions on the Second Amendment as well, obviously right to keep and bear arms, that, does, that means you can have them, but that doesn't mean you can have them everywhere. Uh, so there's restrictions on carrying guns in public still. Uh, you have to have a specific license to be able to uh, open carry or conceal carry. Uh, and also, you can't bring them to school, obviously. You can't uh, bring them through an airport unless it's, I think you can bring them in checked bags uh, if they're unloaded with the clip separate and everything. But uh, you can't be just like carrying them on an airplane, obviously. Uh, the Third Amendment, soldiers can't be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner um, in a time of peace. And then in a time of war, uh, it can be prescribed by law. So what this means is, that quartering act that we talked about, you can't do that here. So if it's a time of peace, you can't be lodged in people's houses forcibly. Uh, what you'll notice about the second part of this though is it says, nor in a time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So like if Russia invaded the West Coast and they sent troops over here, Congress could pass a law that allows the quartering of troops in people's houses, um, but that has to be a time of actual war. So we haven't had an instance where that's been the case where we need to have troops stationed in people's houses. Um, there is still a way that they can be quartered in houses according to the Third Amendment. Um, so then the next amendment here, uh, the Fourth Amendment is unreasonable search and seizures. That's kind of the main uh, phrase there. So we are protected against unreasonable search and seizures. So warrants have to be issued to a uh, like search houses and things like that and they can only be searching for the specific thing that 
uh, is on the warrant. Um, cars are considered a movable scene of a crime, and so uh, there are exceptions made for cars. Uh, there's also exceptions made to this when you're on campus. Uh, normally, I have Officer Stewart come and talk about the rules on campus, but if you're parked on or near campus, those same rules don't apply. Uh, they're able to check your car because you're on government property, and if it's deemed to be a threat to the public safety of the school, uh, then they can search your car without um, without a warrant or even without really probable cause. It's kind of, a, I think, reasonable suspicion is what they uh, describe it as here. Uh, Fifth Amendment, there's a lot of different things going on here. Um, if there's a capital crime, you have the right to be indicted by a grand jury. So what that means is before the trial, they put together a grand jury that reviews the evidence to decide if that person should be charged with the crime because you don't really want to get those cases wrong. Um, you can't be tried twice for the same crime. So if there's not enough evidence and you try the person and they're declared innocent and then you find more evidence later, it makes it kind of difficult. Um, that's how like, you know, OJ uh, is declared innocent. You can't try him again for that murder now. So, um, and then, can't, yeah, like I was saying, can't be uh, subject to the same offense twice. Uh, so that's called double jeopardy. Uh, you can't be tried for the same crime twice. You don't have to be a witness against yourself. So when you hear someone say they plead the fifth, that's what that means. Um, you don't have to take the stand and defend yourself. You can, you have the right to remain silent. That's where that comes from. And then you can't be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So this goes back to John Locke, life, liberty, and property. Those are the three inalienable rights that he talked about, the three natural rights. So if you're going to deprive people of their life, of their freedom, or of their property, uh, it needs to go through the proper legal channels. And then private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. So the government can ultimately seize any property at any time under a thing called eminent domain. Uh, if they need to use it for some sort of public service uh, that's going on in Grants Pass right now, it's been going on for a couple of years. And there's a company that um, it's over like on J Street. They want to seize that land to make a water treatment plant. Um, and so there's a court battle going on about that because uh, the government's trying to take away their private property. The Sixth Amendment, the major things here, the right to a speedy and public trial. Uh, so that's obviously public is kind of clear, but speedy is kind of subjective. Um, speedy could be, uh, you know, a couple months. It could be a couple years. It just depends. Um, an impartial jury uh, in the state and the district where the crime was committed. So tried by a jury where the crime was. Uh, you have the right to be informed of the nature and cause of your accusation. So you don't just have to show up to court and find out then what you've been arrested for. Uh, you get to to know what you're being tried for and prepare a defense. You have the right to be confronted with witnesses against you and to have witnesses in your favor, and then also have counsel for defense. So uh, the Sixth Amendment is what protects the right to an attorney. Um, when we look at the Miranda rights later on, uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. That's the Fifth Amendment. You also have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one can be appointed for you. That's the Sixth Amendment. So we have to provide that. There are issues with the Sixth Amendment though, uh, because people uh, often, if you don't have enough money, you take the uh, defense counsel offered by the state, um, you get public defense, but it's kind of difficult because ultimately there's so many people that need this um, that we can't actually provide proper defense. Uh, it's been estimated that in major cities, public defenders are only able to spend about six minutes per case with a person. So a lot of times they're just going in and saying, hey, just take the plea deal that we've set up, uh, plead guilty, you'll get a lesser punishment. Uh, but ultimately that means that people don't really have their actual time in court to uh, defend themselves. So that's kind of an issue that's been happening a lot. Uh, Seventh Amendment, if there is a, a suit of common law, civil law, uh, where the controversy exceeds $20, you have the right to a trial by jury. Um, so. If you want to sue someone for 21 bucks, you can go ahead and request a trial by jury. Um, but jury trials cost like 400 bucks at least. Uh, and so if you're suing over 21 bucks, if you lose, now you got to pay like 421 bucks. So it's kind of not worth it unless it's a significant amount of money, but you do have that right. Uh, the Eighth Amendment, you can't 
force excessive bail against people. Uh, so uh, that's the first part. And then you can't afford, you can't impose excessive fines on people for crimes that are committed. And you can't inflict cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, so there was a murder suspect who uh, had a $4 billion bond. And ultimately what you have to do is normally put up 10% of the bond uh, to get out of jail. Uh, and so 10% of 4 billion is still a lot of money. Um, that would be 0.4 billion, which is $400 million. So a uh, pretty significant amount of money there. Um, so ultimately this was determined to be excessive bail and it was lowered. Uh, so he was ultimately able to get out of jail eventually, but then uh, he also ended up getting charged with murder and now he's in jail. So uh, amendments nine and 10 are kind of a catch all. And so uh, it says you have more rights than are listed. And so ultimately it says, these aren't the only rights you have. So it just allows there to be more rights. Um, and it also allows states to kind of have more of a say in what those rights are. And then the 10th Amendment just says, if we don't talk about it in the Constitution, it is a power reserved for the states. So that's how it kind of leaves everything else up to the states and uh, preserves the power of the states while still having a strong government. Um, so as far as amendments go, we have 27 uh, currently. 10 of them were passed in 1792, uh, right after the Constitution was ratified. There's been over 10,000 amendments proposed. It's a lengthy process to try and get an amendment passed. There's one called the Equal Rights Amendment that's been up for uh, like 30 years. Uh, but you have to get, it usually starts in Congress. You get two thirds of Congress and then you have to get three fourths of the states. Um, and so it passed, Cong the Equal Rights Amendment passed Congress but didn't pass all the states. Uh, there was also a flag burning amendment that said you can't burn the flag. Uh, that was passed by enough states but it hasn't been passed by uh, enough people in Congress. So it fell, I believe, two votes short last time it was voted on in like 2003. So those are the closest to uh, new amendments that we've gotten uh, since the 90s. Okay, so that's what we did today. And then we had some time to, uh, we did like a Bill of Rights Kahoot. And then uh, you got to do your journal for the day as well. So reflecting on your learning for the week, make sure you turn that in. Uh, but that is everything for today. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.